Hello friends, this video on locomotion and movement part 15 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So now we will talk about the next part of the axial skeleton that is the vertebral column. So vertebral column is located on the dorsal side of the human body that is towards the back side. In fact, what we call as backbone. Backbone is nothing but a part, is, it is located inside the vertebral column. So it is composed of 26 serially arranged units. Each unit is known as a vertebrae. So it is like this. So here in this picture, you can actually see that the different units. So these units, similar units, there are total 26 of them. So the vertebral column, it starts from the base of the skull here and it extends up to the hip region. So from here till here. So that is the length of the vertebral column. So now let us look at the different regions of the vertebral column. Now the vertebral column is divided into the following regions and they are named based upon where they are located. So the first, now the first region is the cervical vertebra. So if you see the topmost region of the vertebral column is known as the cervical vertebra and this region is known as the cervical curve. Now this cervical curve has a total of seven vertebra. So there are actually seven sections. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven like that. There are seven vertebra and this region is called the cervical curve. The first vertebra of the vertebral column is the atlas. So this atlas connects with the uh, occipital condyles of the skull. So that is where it starts from. The entire story of vertebral column starts from here. Now each of these vertebra which we will be talking about now, they all of them has a hollow central portion which is known as the neural canal. And this neural canal is that region through which the spinal cord passes. So let us look at the other regions. The next region is the thoracic vertebra. It is called thoracic because it is located in the thoracic cavity. So this portion is known as the thoracic cavity. So this is, these are the thoracic vertebra. And there are a total of 12 vertebra in the thoracic curve. In this region, a total of 12 vertebra are present. Now, this thoracic is formed by fusion of now these thoracic vertebra they are located in the chest region and they are less flexible in fact they are more stronger less flexible due to the presence of ribs so the ribs are also present like this like a cage like structure in the thoracic region so because of the presence of the ribs they are less flexible but more strong Next is the lumbar vertebra the lumbar vertebra there are total five vertebra and they are located below the thoracic cavity. So they are more flexible due to the lack of ribs. So the lumbar vertebra is more flexible. Therefore you would have seen that near the waist region these vertebra are present. So the waist portion is more flexible when compared to the thoracic portion. Fourth one is the sacral vertebra. So sacral vertebra is a single vertebra. There is one single vertebra in the sacral region. This is the sacral vertebra. If you see and this is a single bone which is formed by fusion of smaller bones during adolescence. So this vertebra is formed later. It is not present in a newborn baby but it forms later. And now the last vertebra that is the cochicheal vertebra. So this is the last vertebra which is located here and it has also only one vertebra. So this region. Now often the sacral vertebra and the cochicheal vertebra both are considered as a part of the sacral curve. So these are the different regions of the body. So if you look at it here in this portion you can actually see the presence of the ribs in the thoracic curve and it is not there in the lumbar curve. That is why thoracic curve is more flexible when compared to the lumbar curve. 
so these are the various regions of the vertebral column now as i said throughout this vertebral column they have a the center a hollow region in the center and through that passes the spinal cord so this is the this is like this the set through the center of this passes the spinal cord and spinal cord is nothing but the backbone because of which we are able to stand we are able to sit so what is the significance of having the vertebral column it protects the spinal cord because it provides a central region and thus protects the spinal cord and we all know how crucial spinal cord is because it is a part of the central nervous system so it carries sensitive information if the central nervous system stops working a person cannot survive point of attachment for ribs so if you see here these ribs they are attached to the vertebral column so they are a point of attachment for them provide support to the head so this vertebral column provides support to the head so here this region if you see that is how it supports the head let us look at the next part of axial skeleton that is the sternum now the word sternum it is a greek word which means chest so this chest portion is known as the the breast bone or the bone of this chest portion is called the sternum so basically this bone is the sternum so it is a flat bone on the ventral side of thorax so ventral side is the inner side the front side so this bone bone is the sternum so if you look at it closely this is the sternum it is present along the midline of the thoracic cavity so midline this is the midline so it is present along the midline stabilizes the thoracic skeleton so if you see it, it provides a, a kind of support to the ribs which can the ribs and the sternum and the vertebral column the vertebral column is present on the dorsal side sternum is present on the front side so sternum on front side and vertebral vertebral column at the back side can support the structure of ribs and that is how it forms the entire rib cage so if you see this is the front side of sternum and this one is present at the back side the vertebral column and these rib stuck is connected to the sternum on the front side and to the vertebral column on the back side so that is how the ribs are stabilized it protects internal organs of chest region so what kind of internal organs for example heart one of the most important organs of the chest region so that means it can protect the internal softer organs now let us look at the last portion of the axial skeleton that is the ribs as i said these are thin flat bone connected dorsally to vertebral column and ventrally to sternum so back side they are connected to the vertical column vertebral column and front side they are connected to the sternum so this is how it is so if you see the orange and green colored structure they are the ribs so front side it is the sternum and back side it is the vertebral column now total 12 pairs of ribs exist like 1 2 3 4 like that there are total 12 pairs of ribs why pairs one on this side and the one on other side so that means the 12 pairs of ribs exist the ribs sternum and thoracic vertebrae all of them together form the rib cage cage means uh, like how you keep uh, you would have seen how the animals are present inside the cage so cage is like a, a closed box kind of a structure which is made up of grills like this so similarly these ribs together form a cage like structure and inside this cage all the delicate organs are located so that is why this is known as a rib cage and the rib cage is formed by the ribs obviously and the support from sternum and thoracic vertebrae on both front and back side respectively so let us look at the different types of ribs as i said there are 12 pairs of ribs which exist there are some ribs which are called true ribs what is the meaning of true ribs the first seven pairs of ribs the ones which are displayed in orange they are the first seven pairs of ribs which are called the true ribs why are they called true ribs because they are directly connected with sternum through hyaline cartilage they are also directly connected to thoracic vertebra so on the front side they are directly connected to sternum so you can see they are they have direct point of contact with sternum through hyaline cartilage similarly at the back side they are directly connected to thoracic vertebra so that is why they are called true ribs 
The next type of ribs are the false ribs. So these false ribs are the 8th, 9th and 10th pairs of ribs. So 8th, 9th and 10th, the green ones are the uh, false ribs. Why are they called false ribs? Because they are connected to sternum via the 7th rib. So if you see here, this point is connected only to the 7th rib. After 7th rib, the 8th, 9th and 10th are not directly connected to sternum. They are all connected to 7th rib and the 7th rib in turn is connected to the sternum. So since they are not directly connected to the sternum, they are called false ribs. However, they are connected directly to thoracic vertebra. Backside, they are connected to the thoracic vertebra. So, they are also known as vertebrochondral ribs. Since they are connected directly to the vertebral column, so they are called vertebrochondral ribs. And the last two ribs are the floating ribs. What is the meaning of that? That means the 11th and the 12th pairs of ribs which are not connected ventrally. That means the last two ribs somewhat like this. So these two ribs, they are connected to the uh, vertebral column at the back side, but on the ventral side, that is on the front side, they are not at all connected to the sternum. So these two ribs are known as the floating ribs. So these are the different types of ribs which uh, form the rib cage. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.